Uh, guys, Mikey from Com3 Interactive, welcome back to the channel. And as per popular ish demand, another episode of the first person controller series. This time it's going to be quite an important one, and that's going to be interaction. So not only are we going to be adding the ability to interact with objects to our first person controller, we're also going to need to make some interactable objects. So this one might be a little bit longer than some of the others, but I promise it's going to be really useful for you. So enough waffling on, let's just jump straight into it right after we thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website and keep up to date with what the guy is up to. And I also just want to thank everybody supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so we're right back where we left off before. Now, what we want to do, we want to add in some interactable objects into this scene that we can do whatever we want with. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to create C Sharp script and we're going to call it interactable. You can call it whatever you want, get rid of start and update, we won't be needing those. But what we will need to do, we need to mark this class as abstract. Why can I not spell? There we go. And the reason we're doing this is we want to make interactable, inheritable from other classes are key items. So by doing an abstract class, we can actually define some methods inside of here that every interactable needs. So that's going to be public void on interact. We're going to need another one, public void on focus. And we're going to need a third, oops, on focus. And we're going to need a third public void on lose focus. Now, as you see, we get these errors. That's because we want these to be abstract classes, meaning they're basically just a placeholder class. And what we're going to do, if we add that abstract keyword in there, that'll get rid of those errors. And then every class that we inherit from interactable, we'll need to define what these three things need to do. Okay, so we have our interactable class for now. We're going to leave that. And then we're going to hop on over to our first person controller and we're going to set up the actual interaction system inside of this. So let's scroll down and we'll pop it underneath our zoom and slide stuff. So again, we're going to add in another header, call this interaction. Why? Go away. Right. So the first thing we're going to need, a serialized field. That's going to be a private vector three, and that's going to be interaction waypoint. Next, another serialized field, private float interaction distance. And that's going to be how far a ray can travel to actually interact with an object in the environment. Next, we're going to need a serialized field, private. This one's going to be a layer mask, and that's going to be our interaction layer. Then the final thing that we need inside of our properties going to be a private interactable, current interactable. So we're going to keep a reference to whatever we're looking at, whatever we're interacting with, so we can call methods on that object. And we also want to make this modular as well. So inside of our functional options, we can put private bool and interact, and we'll set that to true by default. Here we go, cooking with gas. So now inside of our update method again, Inside of our initial if statement, we can add another if can interact, then we can actually perform our interaction methods. So let's create a private void handle interaction check and another private void handle interaction input. And we'll call both of these inside of that if statement. So handle interaction check is going to constantly raycast out and look for interactable objects. Handle interaction input is actually going to be when we hit our interact key and we want to perform some sort of action. So let's start with our handle interaction input for now, while this is going to be the shorter class. So first of all, we want to check if input.get key down interact. I don't think I've set up the interact key binding, have I? No, I haven't. So let's just copy that out, pop that in there, interact key. So now left mouse button, mouse zero is gonna be our interact button. 
So inside of our handle interaction input, we'll check if get key down interaction key and our current interactable is not equal to null. If it is, there's nothing to interact with. Then we'll actually raycast out from our camera's point of view to the center of the screen where our cursor is going to be or our crosser, and we'll grab that information. So and physics dot raycast, and we're going to start our ray at the player camera. We're going to use dot viewport point to ray. Then we'll pass in our interaction ray point. Now we're going to set that up in the inspector in just a moment, but that's just going to start our ray. A little bit more forward than our actual camera. Next we want to actually make sure that we can get the hit data from this so we're going to use the out keyword raycast hit and we'll just call that hit. Next is the distance so that's going to be the interaction distance and then finally our interaction layer that is a long if statement. So what this is going to do, if we press our left mouse button, our interact key, and our current interactable is not equal to null, which is going to be set inside our handle interaction check, then we're going to raycast out from the camera for however far we want, and we're only going to be interested in an interactable's layer. If all that is true, then we've hit an interactable object. So we know that we can call current interactable dot on interact. And the reason that we know we have on interact is because whatever our object is, if it's inheriting from interactable and this is all true, then we are guaranteed this on interact because we've declared it as an abstract method inside of our interactable class. Now we will see this working in just a second, but first we've got to make sure that we're actually checking for interactables inside of our handle interaction check. So inside of this, we're going to constantly raycast and look for interactable objects. So if physics.raycast, and again, we're going to do it from the same point that we are for our actual handling the uh, interaction input. So that's going to be our player camera dot viewpoint to ray and pass in our interaction ray point. Again, we're going to use the out keyword and that's going to be again a raycast hit hit. And then finally, we want our interaction distance. Now this time we aren't specifying by a layer because if we were to actually specify there that we're only interested in the interactables layer, then you'd be able to interact with any object as long as you're within that interaction distance through walls or other objects. So we want to take into consideration all colliders when we're checking for interactable objects. Okay, so we're actually doing this interaction check but we do actually want to take into consideration a layer, but we don't want to omit all other layers. So let's start by hopping back over into our game view, and we're gonna set up a new layer by clicking in the inspector, add new layer. And I'm gonna call that interactable. Save that, and we can leave that at that. And to make sure that every one of our interactable objects is on that layer, Inside of our abstract interactable class, we can do a public virtual void, and we're going to use the awake method. And all we're going to do, we're going to set our game object dot layer equal to nine. Nine being the layer index of any interactable object, and we can validate that if we just click over to our layers, we see interactable nine. So. Any object that inherits from interactable will automatically be given the layer 9, which now we can check for inside of our first person controller. And we'll check that first. So if our hit.collider.gameobject.layer is equal to 9, and our current interactable is actually equal to null this time, so we're not actually looking any at anything at this point, then we can try and get the interactable component from this game object. So we can do hit.collider dot try get component and pass it out to our current interactable. Now usually you when you're using try get component you need to specify the actual type that you're looking for. But this is actually quite smart because what it's going to do is going to infer that right we want type interactable because current interactable is of that type. Not strictly important, just thought I'd throw that in there as well. And then we can check if our 
current interactable, which means if our current interactable is now not null, so we have actually put our cursor across an interactable object, we'll do current interactable dot on focus, because this is the first frame in which we've actually looked at this interactable object. So that takes into consideration looking at an object for the first time, but what about if we lose focus, so we already have a currently selected interactable object, but now we're no longer looking at it. Well, we want to call the on lose focus there. So we'll do an else if from our raycast, current interactable. So if our raycast doesn't find anything and we have a current interactable inside of the script, we're going to call current interactable dot on lose focus and set current interactable equal to null. Now, the eagle-eyed viewers among you may have noticed one small issue with how I'm doing this now, and we are going to fix it. And that issue is, if we're looking at an object, and we're, all, like, we're already looking at it, so current interactable isn't equal to null, and without breaking focus, if we hop over to another interactable object that's either intersecting or directly next to that object, our current interactable isn't going to actually update with that not currently anyway, but we are going to change that right now. And a really easy way of doing that, we can wrap this in brackets. So we're going to make sure that the object that we're looking at is on layer nine and current interactable is null or hit dot collider dot game object dot get instance ID is not equal to our current interactable dot get instance ID. So what that's going to do, just to uh, break this down for you, if it's on layer nine and we're not interactable, then we're going to do this anyway. Or if we don't have a, an interactable object selected, we're going to find that interactable object on the object that we're looking at. If current interactable is not null, then we're going to make sure that the object that we're looking at hit collider game object is not actually the same object as what we currently have stored as our current interactable. If those two instance IDs aren't the same, then we're going to call try get component and get the new current interactable. I hope this is making sense because now that should be it. These two methods should allow us to control any object, interact with any object, any way that we see fit. So right now, nothing's going to happen because we need an interactable object. So let's create a C-sharp script, and I'm going to call this test interactable. Let's open it up, get rid of start and update, and you'll see what this abstract class is actually going to do here, because instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to inherit from interactable. That's going to give us an error because we need to implement on focus, on interact, and on lose focus. And as you can see, this is a public override void, and then an identical method name and signature to what we have inside of our base interactable class. So I'm only going to do this really simply for, for now. So we're going to print out on focus, looking at gameobject.name. In our loose focus, we're going to print out stop looking at the object, and then on interact interacted with game object name. So now that we have this class, we can assign it to a game object. So let's just create a cube and we'll bring this over to our player and we'll assign our test interactable script to it. Now, one thing to note, if you want an object to be interactable, you are going to need a collider. It doesn't have to be a box collider, it just needs to be any form of collider or else Raycast can't actually detect that object. Just bear that in mind. And now if we were to play the game, in fact, let's exit full screen mode. We can actually see our console. We walk over to our cube, look at it. Nothing's happening. <gasps> because I'm an absolute idiot and I didn't set up a first person controller properties for the interaction. Silly me. All right, so let's set this up. So our interaction ray point, we want to be 0.5 on the X, 0.5 on the Y, 0 on the X. Interaction distance, we'll give our player the distance of two units to interact with an object. And then inside of our interaction layer, we want to select the interactable layer. Now let's play it. We walk over to our cube. We see we're looking at cube six. 
We look away, we stop looking at it. If we look at it again and click, interacted with cube six. Let's give that a proper name. Test cube one, we'll duplicate that, bring that over and overlap it, and then call this one test cube two. Right, so they both have the same script, but we should be able to focus on one and then the other and takes into consideration which one we're actually looking at. Okay, so we're now looking at test cube one, move over, we're looking at test cube two, and we never broke focus on an interactable object whatsoever. We click, interacted with test cube one, interacted with test cube two, perfect. And there we have it, now our player can actually interact with any object whatsoever. All you need to do, create your scripts, inherit from interactable, and then inside of each of the three methods, decide what you want to happen if the player looks at that object, stops looking at that object, or actually interacts with that object. And then all the code from there on in is down to you. So I hope you've learned something on this one. This one is actually going to come in quite handy for future tutorials where we're going to start doing things like door opening systems and things like that because obviously doors are going to be an interactable object and we're going to use this exact system but that's coming in a future tutorial. Until then, I'll see you. Thanks for watching guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.